Hey there, this is Andrew. I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different and we're going to be making a typing game. And this is just to kind of take a breather, make something simple. Hopefully some people out there find it pretty useful, but that's pretty much it. I made this a couple months ago and I've been wanting to share it with everyone. So now seemed like a pretty good time to do that. And we're going to be starting from an absolute empty project and we'll be going over how to create the basic typing mechanic as well as creating a word bank for it. All right, so let's get started. And with every project, I usually like to do this weird process of cleaning up everything where since we're not going to need a directional light, let's delete that. I usually go up to window, then I go down to rendering, lighting settings, and then I just delete the skybox and the missing light since we're not going to be needing that either. I'm then going to go to my main camera. And usually I like to change it from this blue camera preview. I usually like to hide anything that makes it scream like Unity default. So we're just going to change it to this pink color. Obviously you can change it to any color you want. And for our typing game, we're just going to have a simple canvas. So we'll come to our hierarchy and right click, go to UI, and we'll just click on text actually. So that'll create a canvas for us. We'll double click on that. We'll go to our 2D view. And we'll also delete this event system because we're not going to need that either. So now that we have our canvas, we're going to select our text here. I'm going to click on our little alignment. I'm going to hold Alt and Shift, and it's going to, you can see that it's going to have this pivot point, and it's also going to make it stretch to the entire size of the rect transform. And then I'm going to hit my alignment for the text itself. And then so we can see it a little bit easier, let's change our color. So we got that. And then how big should we, do we need to make this? Let's say how big is 100? A hundred, maybe a little big. Let's do, no, that's way too big. <laughs> let's do 75 and we'll just say word. Cool. Now let's go into our assets folder and let's create a new folder. And this is just going to be for our scripts. We're only going to have two scripts for this. So, you know, maybe, maybe ignore the folder. And then we're going to create an empty aim game object, not a name object. And we're just going to call it typer. We're going to do the typing mechanic first because because obviously it's the more important thing and we'll make a word bank in the next video. But because I'm weird, I'm gonna go to our transform and I'm gonna reset it to make sure it's zeroed out. Now that we have a game object all set up, let's create a new script. And we're just gonna call this typer. And then we're going to attach it onto this typer object. There we go. And then again, because I'm crazy, let's make a prefabs folder. And we'll drag our little typer in there. So now we have a little typer prefab. Cool. So if we even have other scenes and we want to make sure this typer is consistent across everything, we have the little prefab already set up. And now if we go to our game view, we'll see that this is what it looks like. Yay. So now that we have that, let's just start typing some stuff. Let's type in our typer script. All right, now here we are within our typing script where the first thing that we're going to need to do is add a new namespace here because we're going to need some references or just a reference to the unity text class. So we'll need to do unity engine.ui. And then we're going to need some variables. We're going to need four variables in total. Two of them are going to be public and two of them are going to be private. Not that that really matters, but should be a good thing to start with. Now, actually we're going to need four total, but we haven't created our word bank script yet. So but let's make a note to ourselves here and we'll say, you need a word bank. You don't need to type that out, but that's what I'm going to type to me. And we're going to have a public text that we're just going to call word output. And that's going to be that text that we just created that we typed the word word into. That's not confusing. And let's create our two private strings here. One that's going to contain the remaining bit of the word that we need to type out. and the current word that we're trying to basically complete. I'm gonna just call that current word. And we initialize that to an empty string as well. And what makes this a pretty simple script is that as we're typing letters and comparing it to the current word that we're gonna be doing, it's gonna be taking those letters off and setting it to whatever the remaining word is that we need to type out. So we don't have to screw with any indexes and check to see and iterate along each character in a word. We're not gonna do any of that. We're just going to say, hey, is the letter we're typing in the first character and the remaining word? If it isn't, then don't do anything. So the logic's pretty simple there. But like always, let's return or get rid of these two comments here. I'm going to make these private. I'm 
and then within start, oh, we, we're not going to do that just yet. We need to create a function that we're going to call on start where we're going to be setting the current word. Now, since so we don't have our word bank just yet, we may want to set our current word to whatever we want to use that we want to test for right now until we have it. So we'll just write, what word should we put here? Um, muffins. Okay, perfect. That's exactly, I hope you typed that too, or that's the word that you were thinking, because that was what I was thinking. But what we're going to be doing is creating a function called set current word. Now that we have that, that's what's going to be called and start here. So we'll have set, set current word. And within this set current word, this is where it's also going to try and get a word from that word bank that we're going to create. Since we don't have that, we'll just say get bank word. And we'll handle that next time. But anytime we set a new current word, we want to update the remaining word as well. So we'll have a function for that. And we're going to want to call that from set current word. So we'll say set remaining word. We actually needed to give it an argument too. So let's do that. And it's going to accept a string. It's just going to be called, we'll just call it new string. But when we set it, we're going to want to pass in our current word. So if you see the logic here, when we start, we have set current word, where we would, if we had a word bank, we would get a word from it. And then once we set that to the current word, we then want to pass it to our remaining word so we can set it there as well. And we have these sort of set functions because whenever we want to set a word, we want to make sure that all the other things are basically being told. And you'll see why in just a second. So anytime we're setting our remaining word or updating it or changing it or anything like that, we're going to want to send an update to our interface or to our word output. So our, we have our word output dot text it's going to be equal to our remaining word. There we go. And that all will make a little bit more sense. We have a word bank, so don't worry about it too much. And then we can just scroll down here. We actually, let's just go down to update. There we go. And before we even type anything in there, let's just write all the signatures out for what we're going to need. So the first thing that we're going to need is a function for checking our input. There we go. And then from our check input, we're obviously going to need to be checking whatever letters are being entered and seeing if it's the correct one. So we'll say enter letter. We'll have a string here instead of just a character because that does simplify a few things for us. And that argument is just going to be the typed letter that we're entering. And then we have three more functions that are all pretty simple. One is just to see if it's the correct letter where it's going to be returning a Boolean value. And we'll return false for now. We'll have a function that removes the letter from our remaining word. Getting ahead of myself, I'm trying to write things in there. <laughs> and then we have one more. It's going to be a check to see if the word is complete. Now this may all seem like a little bit much at first, but it's all really simple. Don't worry about it. A lot of these are two, maybe four, four lines. So it's all quite simple. And these are all in order as well. So they do sort of cascade into one another. So you'll see that, you'll see how that works itself out in just a second. So within our update, every frame, we're gonna wanna check our input. And that's it, that's all we need to do in update. And then within check input, we're gonna have an if statement that's gonna be checking for our input. So we're gonna say input dot any key down and whenever a key is pressed, we're going to want to get whatever input string is sort of associated with the key. So if we have our stree, string, our keys pressed, we're going to get our input and the input string. And this string contains all of the keys that have been pressed this particular frame, which is actually pretty hard to do is press multiple keys on the exact same frame. But if you accidentally do do that, we're going to be checking for it. So as an example, this input string could contain, if I hit the A and the S key at the same time, it's going to contain an A and an S. But for simplicity's sake, we're just going to want to register inputs where only one key was pressed that frame. So to sort of mitigate that, we're just going to check to see how many characters are in the string that we got this frame. 
So we have our string called keys pressed. And if our length is equal to one, which ultimately just means, hey, only one key, one letter key was pressed, we're gonna wanna call enter letter. And now at this point, we've checked our input, we've gotten a key and we've gotten a letter, and we need to actually compare it to the current word that we're trying to complete. So now that we know that we just have one key that's being pressed, we want to see if it's the correct one. So this is where we're going to be calling if is correct letter. We'll put in our typed letter. And if it's the correct letter, we're just going to be running whatever functionality is in this if statement. Before we finish that, actually, we'll go down to is correct letter so you can see how that works. And this is where we're going to be accessing that remaining word. And how we're going to be checking for this is that we're going to use the index of function. We'll be passing in our letter. And what this does is let's say we're trying to spell the word muffins and we type in the letter M. Since it's going to be the first character in our string, it's going to have an index of zero. So naturally, the letter that we're passing in, we want it to match the first one. So we just want to say, hey, is the index of the letter that we're trying to check zero, meaning it's the very first one, then it's the correct letter that we're looking for. And then if it's the correct letter, then we want to remove it. So we'll call that remove letter function and we'll fill that out right now. Let's also move down and we'll get rid of our input and our check input and we'll write string, new string, where we're gonna have our remaining word. And we're just going to remove the letter from a starting index of zero and we're just going to remove one. So all this does, it's gonna remove that first character from the string. And then once we've done that, we're gonna call that set remaining word function and we'll be passing in that new string. So if you remember what I mentioned previously, how this function is coming in handy, where anytime we're gonna be updating the remaining word, we're gonna be outputting it to that text as well. Okay, cool. So now when we enter a letter, we check to see if it's the correct one. If it is, then we wanna remove it from the string. Next, we wanna to check to see if the word is complete once we remove the letter. So we'll be making a call to if is word complete. And before we enter whatever is gonna be in there, let's go down to that function. Where this is also incredibly simple, where all we're gonna be doing is saying, going to our remaining word and saying, hey, what's your length? If it's zero, then obviously we've removed all of the characters from this string. So if there's no more to type, then obviously the word's complete. And we actually didn't need these curly braces. I was just putting those in just for safekeeping. But once the word that we're currently working on is complete, we're going to want to set the current word, which is going to go to the word bank and it's gonna get us a new one. And if we wanna just look at that again, just so we can see it all in its own little loop. If you remember when we set the current word, it would get a word from our word bank and it would also update the remaining word so we can start checking that new word to see if we can remove characters from it. And one thing I actually almost forgot, if we go all the way up to the top to our current word here, our word bank is actually going to be making sure that all of our letters are gonna be lowercase. And since all the strings that we're gonna be getting from our input are gonna be lowercase, let's make sure that all the letters within our current word for our testing are gonna be lowercase. So let's save that. Let's go back into Unity so we can set up our word output. So let's now click on our typer. See that we have our new word output. We'll drag our text in there. Let's rename this text as well. We'll just call this output. There we go. And now it's at play. And now we can, and now we can type our word in. There we go. And since we don't have another word to pull from, it's just going to reset. And there we go. And that's about it for this video on creating the main mechanic of a typing game. Hopefully you found it useful. In the next one, I think we'll work on a word bank so we can have a series of words that we'll need to complete. But that's it for me. I'll see you in the next one.